Hey guys, welcome to episode 37 and the last episode of 2023. Wow. It's been a really fun ride. We can't wait to keep this going in 2024. And yeah, thank you for everything. Mm -hmm. Happy holidays. Hope everyone had a good Christmas. Yeah, hope you guys had a great Christmas. Spent some time with your family. Mm -hmm. This is the first year I don't have like extravagant plans for New Year's. That's like the definition of getting old. Yeah, I literally have no plans. Remember like back in the day, you just like... Oh my God, New Year's was like the biggest jam of the year. You know, I saw this meme the other day. It's so off topic, but it was like Canadian girls like in dresses, like out in the snow going to clubs. And it's just like Canadian girls are built different. Like yeah, no jackets, so skin tight funny. dresses. It's so <laughs> true. I'm um, I'm not a huge jacket wearer. I just... I know. I hate I hate wearing a jacket to a bar. Yeah, because you, you put it down... I'd yeah. rather just be in my car, to my house, to my office, whatever, and just run when yeah. I'm outside. Just run, just sprint. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, anyways. anyways, hope everyone has a good new year too. I'm yeah, sure everyone, year. it's funny, everyone starts a new year with goals and um, resolutions. Yeah. And then by the end of the year, it's you don't even remember what, <laughs> what you yeah. promised to yourself. <laughs> it's very um, true. But, but hey, if anybody has real estate it. goals for 2024. Book a call. Book a call. It's free. It is free. Lots of people are taking advantage of it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, definitely book a call with us. It'll be down below in the calendar. And, yeah, like, subscribe, leave us a review, all that good stuff. If you want short form stuff, we're on Instagram and TikTok mm -hmm. and YouTube shorts. So follow us there. Yeah. Let's start with Brooke's top three predictions. Ooh, we're starting with that. Okay. Yeah. Predictions for 2024. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to read them? I sent them to you, yeah. but I, I Do can. Do you remember them? Yeah. I, I feel like I can. I mean, there's nothing crazy. I think that anybody who follows the major topics like week to week will probably be aligned with what I have to say with um, the Bank of Canada. Um, I think they're going to cut four times. I've heard three times a lot. I say they cut four times. Um, I don't think in the first quarter we'll see any cuts. I think we'll probably just hold steady. I think it's going to be a slow start. Um, I think they'll be, we'll be, have a busy spring market. And if that is paired with some rate cuts, um, my second leading into my second prediction, I think we'll see an increase in number of sales and also home prices. Um, I think in the core GTA, we will see 5%, um, increase that includes Hamilton, um, yeah, number of sales definitely just, we did just come from the lowest amount of sales in a year, in 20 years. So I think we're going to see a good chunk. We're due for some. We're due. I think a lot of people were on the sidelines um, just waiting to see how things play out. Um, but I think more people will jump, jump in now that rates are going to start coming down. Fixed rates will um, be lower first just because of the bond yield being down and, and then the Bank of Canada should cut. I'd say starting in the second quarter. Um, I do think we're going to see a flood of condo sales. A lot of people entering occupancy period um, now and, and in the next um, six months, just develop, um, investors that bought three, four years ago that now renting it, you're upside down. So I think we're going to see a lot of condos on the market. So maybe not as much of an increase as semi-detached townhouses and detached. Um, I think we're back to a normal market where not everything is going to fly off the shelf. There's going to be a ton of expired and terminated and then some that sell obviously in bidding wars. And it just comes down to how much work you're putting into your listing, the curb appeal, um, doing those minor fixes, getting your house, you know, staged and market ready is going to be important because buyers will still have a choice. I think, I think we'll stay in a buyer's market, um, even as sales creep up. Um, yeah. Were those th is that three predictions? There yeah. Yeah. I think there you actually had four there. Yeah. There you go. You <laughs> All heard right. It here first. <laughs> My hot takes are there will be more housing fires and Ooh. there will be more developers that go underwater. I think we're going to see some bank uh, or some developers that are in bankruptcy mm -hmm. or on um, receivership. Even even now you he you hear about them. So now yeah, the rumblings. as things unfold and as yeah. interest rates take its toll i think that'll happen and then yeah we're seeing like one fire a week right now so um it's uh it's pretty crazy my next has anybody been caught no i don't think so everything is like under investigation and it always happens in the middle of the night 
Huh. <laughs> So it's just like, even when you think about it too, it's like, you're actually hurting housing completions. Like, the, yeah, everyone yeah. talks about housing starts, yeah, but yeah. about like completions, like you're just hurting yeah. that number even more too. But yeah. Like I said, people's backs are against the wall. What do you do? You just start swinging. Imagine like you're in a complex with a couple other buyers and you're underwater and you're not knowing what to do. And then you like pray and the next morning you hear your house burned down from somebody else lighting theirs on fire and yours just happened to be like, oh, yeah, that works. Go buy a lottery <laughs> ticket too, right? <laughs> My next prediction is that there will be two rate cuts next year, but there will be no cuts in the spring market. So we won't see cuts until the summer and our first cut will be 25 basis point. And then we'll see a cut in December at the end. And the reason for that is the Bank of Canada does not want to set the housing market back on fire. Because spring market's usually the busiest. So spring market's that. the busiest. So they're going to wait till after the spring. I would, if there was a betting site, I would bet that. <laughs> when things slow down in the summer, traditionally. Yeah. Traditionally, people go on vacation. They go to cottages. They're busy with kids' sports camps. So I don't, Yeah. I can almost guarantee that, you know, if, if Tiff's thinking here, he's thinking there's no way I'm cutting in the spring because I don't want to set the real estate market back on and make it hot again like I did in 2023. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to wait until summertime. And then again in December, like we're in right now, we're probably the only people like working and putting out content. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a really slow time around Christmas. People just have better things to do for the most part. So um, that's my cut. And my last prediction is that they're going to cap international students and foreign workers. They're going to step up and they're going to start capping this thing because it's just gone out of control. Mm -hmm. And then my last outlier prediction, yeah. which you already heard, okay. is Justin Trudeau will resign Oh yeah, you in twenty twenty four, or there will be an election. Huh. That's my kind of like long shot prediction, just for funsies, you know. Yeah, but I bet you a lot of people hope it comes true. Interesting. Yeah, those are my top three plus one prediction because you gave an extra one too, so I yeah. did as well. Good predictions, <laughs> huh? We'll have to like replay this video at the beginning of the end of twenty twenty four and see yeah, how right we were. I know. We'll try and do one every year. It's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. In, in it's they're more educated predictions rather than yeah like nobody knows what's gonna happen well, if we did we wouldn't be sitting here yeah exactly <laughs> um but i mean as much pain as there has been in the last six months i'm hoping that things start to look better right yeah 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 you hope we're kind of out of it and we're on to the yeah. on to better times for a lot of people like the because variable rate mortgage holders um, like a lot of mortgages are in the high sixes and a variable rate, right? And the fixed rate, we should see rates and offered in the fours. Um, yeah. That might be a little bit of relief from what you were expecting. There's been a lot of studies that show that, you know, economic stress can really cause a lot of psychological damage where a lot of people are drinking more, opioid crisis more, more in mental institutions. So yeah, I do hope that we have some better economic news coming forward because there's no doubt there's a lot of people who are just like probably having sleepless nights, right? which really is, is a sad reality. But yeah. do you ever notice that things have to be on one end? Because when the market's going crazy and sellers are benefiting and buyers are, you know, working with low interest rates and putting in offers and excited to get a house, there's always people struggling. So it's the people that couldn't get a house or had to overpay. Um, now it's sellers that can't sell. So we're always on one end. Is there a happy medium ever is really the question where buyers, you know, have choice, can afford their mortgage. Sellers are still, um, you know, be, are, are able to sell their house, um, see profit from when they bought years ago. Uh, investors can still make money on flips and there's, um, you know, the happy medium. There's always going to be somebody that hates the market. Um, sure. If it's a you know yeah. not in line with how things what ideally would look, but I've noticed it's either one end or the complete other. Yeah, you hope it changes. Um, I think that I wrote this in our newsletter this morning. Is that what COVID and what low interest rates did was that it borrowed gains from the future and brought them to the present moment. That's why, like, when people are like, "You're not that bullish on real estate," I just think that it's going to be more of a store of value going forward because remember in COVID, we went up 52% on leveraged money. Yeah. In, in 2015, the average house price was uh, in the 400s. And today it's like 735. At the peak of COVID, it was 813. So, you know, 2015 really wasn't that long ago. We're talking eight years right. for a doubling in the average house price across Canada. Like we're talking about different rural areas. We're you know, we're also talking about the GTA and Vancouver. But if you focus on the GTA in Vancouver, which is where most people are, 
um, those numbers would be even more staggering, which is sad. So I do hope that we do go back to more of a traditional market where buyers and sellers both have opportunity. Yeah. Um, people do have opportunity to sell their home in a reasonably fashionable time yeah. where they're not stuck in a buy and they're forced to walk away from a deposit. Right. And then buyers are there protecting themselves, not overpaying, mm-hmm. um, getting inspections, having finance conditions, you know, even yeah. appraisal conditions, different things like that. Yeah. So I hope we return to that market. So on average, like a five to six percent increase on real estate, um, unless you're in like the outskirts per year, has been a conservative number and normal. Do you think, let's call it from now until 10 years from now, if you broke it down per year, real estate in Canada and the GTA is going to go up at that that rate, like five percent per year? I think it really depends on factors that I, like if I was to guess, I think immigration will slow down. Mm-hmm. And that will affect the housing market in ways that the supply and de- the supply and demand dynamic change. So, if rates stay in the fours, like the Bank of Canada thinks, if we do slow down immigration and we do focus on incentivizing builders to build homes, then I think that real estate will eventually be more of like an inflationary hedge. Mm-hmm. You'll be able to get like a two to four percent return per year. You have pay down. It's a nice home. Mm-hmm. You get to live in it with your family. Um, is that going to happen overnight? No. Mm -hmm. Like in five years, we'll probably be still having the conversation that a couple who's one's a teacher and one's a police officer, which were once jobs where you could buy a beautiful home together and and raise a family. Um, I hope that's possible for the future. I really do. I hope that a teacher and a, and a cop as, as a wonderful family can buy a home and they can raise an awesome family. But right now that's, it's a pipe dream. Yeah. And if real estate continues to go up at rates that are much higher than what a salary offered to those Mm -hmm. positions go up then it's I don't see that ever becoming a thing unless you're buying in in doing the move up yeah right there's only the three things that I always talk about it's you know if we put more supply in the market rates stay higher for a longer we're in the fours we're not going down to the twos and areas like that and if the number of people that come into this country slows down Mm -hmm. we'll be able to restore affordability eventually Mm -hmm. but it's not gonna happen next year Mm -hmm. it's not gonna happen the year after I won't happen in five years, but if immigration stays high, if rates cut and they become low, um, again, then yeah, this train will keep rolling. So those are the metrics that I like to look at. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I guess we'll see, but there's nothing wrong with an inflationary hedge. Like there's nothing wrong with, right. you know, you shouldn't make 52% right. <laughs> on leverage money. So what he means is that it'll go up kind of like with inflation. Yeah. Um, and then obviously there's the cycles, right? You can yeah. see like a big you can spike, a, a spike. You can see a down. Decrease. So that it's, it's almost a line then how you're referring to it as like stocks. Like you can make a lot of money on big spikes, but it just kind of like stocks, especially, um, like dividend stocks and, and that those kind of, um, portfolios, they grow, but slowly. And then sometimes they spike and you can sell and make a lot of money. Sometimes they're down, but if you ride the wave, it's a, it's a slow return, but you can do well. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's a good way to look at real estate. Yeah. I think it's a great investment. Um, long-term. Yeah. You know, you get, you get to live in a place, you get paid down, you get some appreciation mm-hmm. and you get to make it your own. Yeah. So that's the way we should start looking at things. Yeah, if you're an investor, also, then it, it, you know, it's, it's a different story, right? Yeah. But I also have the, um, new stance that owning your own home like your primary residence as an investment yes there's pay down but if you look at like a rate of seven percent like mine right now how much will I have paid for how much will I have bought that house for after it's paid down completely right so I bought for a million fifty right I probably will pay what 1.7 1.7 or something 1.6 yeah hundreds of thousands in interest right yeah. so then that's what I would have paid over the course of 25 years to own this house yes now I have a house worth that and that becomes equity or I rent I pay much lower and the, this is interest rate dependent yeah um and I have investments that either cash flow or break even because then that interest rate or the interest portion of the payment is covered by a tenant um and then yes you will have still paid much more for that investment but um your carrying costs where you live are much cheaper mm-hmm. i don't know yeah it's it's a tough scenario i think the best thing that you can do is 
become financially literate and figure out what works for you and what you understand the most. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of people in Canada right now, like even, you know, friends of mine, they'll be like, I'm so proud of what you've accomplished with your podcast, but I have no interest in it. And, so, and like, to me, it blows my mind. Like, how are you not interested in right. like your financial future? Yeah. But some people just aren't. And yeah. I think that, you know, if you're listening to this right now, you're doing the right thing because totally. down the line in 20 years, when you took control of your financial future, if that's investing in stocks or real estate yeah. or whatever vehicle that you choose, yeah. you'll be way better off than the person who totally. is not investing today for their future. Yeah. And is just living in the moment and, right. you know, you can live in the moment and that's a fine life to live. But I just think that financial stress is like so hard on people It is, and you see it all the time. It is. Yeah. Huh. It's good to have money in the bank. It is. Sucks to say, but it's the truth. Yeah. Not to be a capitalist, but <laughs> 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 anyways, that was good. I like that conversation. Yeah. Let's move on to, um, this next topic here. So Toronto reaches $471 million housing deal with Ottawa which is Trudeau and, and the parliament there, to build 53,000 units in the next decade. So Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was in Toronto on Thursday to announce a $471 million deal with the city. Ottawa says this will produce 12,000 homes in the first three years, the largest agreement yet through the Housing Accelerator Fund. Under the terms of the Accelerator Fund, one quarter of money will flow immediately with the rest dispersed over three years. In return, the city has pledged measures that include speeding up home approvals, increasing supply of rental homes, and protecting existing rental stock. Mark Richardson, the group of Housing Now TO, said he was pleased to see the government offering grants instead of loans, but he noted the city has housing plans that go far beyond the sum of the offer. This is a down payment on future funds that needs to be in the billions, Mr. Richardson said. It's the start of a 20-year program to make up for money we have spent in the last 30 years. So yeah, Toronto getting, is getting involved in the Housing Accelerator Fund. As they should. There's a huge uh, demand for housing here mm -hmm. and even just rental stock. So, so since this is um, federal, this $471 million, um, is this to build like purpose-built rentals or government it's a little, housing? It's a little bit of both, purpose-built rentals. Yeah. Um, I'm sure the plan will be get more in-depth as, as time goes on. But yeah, yeah I know um, the press conference was with Olivia Chow, the new mayor of Toronto. Um, Justin Trudeau was there and Sean Frazier, the housing minister was there. Um, and yeah, the goal is to speed up appro approvals and, and get more housing built. I think it's a drop of the bucket of what Toronto needs. Mm -hmm. 471 million is just, it seems like a lot of money when you say the number, but this is like a billion and billion dollar problem. Right. So 471 million divided by 12,000 is. 30. Well, they said that it's going to build 53,000 units in the next decade. Got it. Yeah. Again, like, but what's it going to be, right? Is it going to be units that. Our 500 square foot shoebox, like we're not going to help people yeah. have families, probably. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the sad reality of it. It's like, I really want to see the fertility rate go up. And I know that even on, on one of our Instagrams that we posted about the fertility rate being low, a lot of women commented, I don't want kids. And that's totally cool. That's totally fair. Like it's yeah. your choice. You get to do whatever you'd like. But a lot of people were in the comments saying, I wish I could have a child. I just can't afford it. Right. Which is it's kind of a sad. Yeah. It's sad. Which is sad because like, I think one of the, like the most beautiful thing yeah. that women have is the power to reproduce and like totally. have a child. Like, no, I, think I it's agree. Amazing. Yeah. You know, I look at these, um, Facebook posts of these like small homes, but like, it's almost like a trailer. Not really. It just doesn't have a foundation, but it's on the ground and they're small, but they're like livable. So you wonder, um, like there's like when I lived in Yukon, like everything and I Wait. didn't even... Yes, I lived in Yukon. What? Yes, I lived in Yukon. Yeah, I in Whitehorse. Can you elaborate on that? Just like <laughs> in, in ten seconds. You didn't know I lived in Whitehorse. No. So I lived in Whitehorse for a while, and I worked in Alaska. So Whitehorse is about an hour drive from Alaska, um, and I worked uh, in Skagway. It's called this little cute like country town. How long were you there for, um, and what was your job? So my job was, I was like a tourist um, manager, like all of the, so Skagway is a port for a lot of cruise ships to like, you know, when the cruise ships mm -hmm. stop at a city and then they, everybody funnels out and goes yeah. whatever. So I would get like 400 people in and it was an outdoor museum and we would serve like tons of food and take them on like the outdoor museum experience and yeah, it was wild. I've always and then I, then I was a bartender for a long time. But that was you, when I worked. In the Yukon? Yeah, in the Yukon. In Whitehorse, I bartended for a while. Um, but then when I was working in Alaska, I was the 
tourist. Like I just. And you were there for how long? Almost a year. Wow. Mm-hmm. I've always wondered who lives in Yukon and you've been sitting in front of me this whole time. That's <laughs> hilarious. You know what though? Um, in the summer months, like May to uh, October, yeah. it would be like 20 degrees outside. Okay. Beautiful. So it's like, you don't, you know, you think about up north and you're like, oh my God, it's so cold. It, it wasn't freezing. Like obviously in the winter, yes, it goes way more negative than, than here. Um, but it was, it was nice. And then the daytime, you have way more sunlight than you do here. Mm. Um, in the mountains and it's just, it's a cool experience. Yeah. I'd love to go. Yeah. It's really cool. Anyways, make your point. Sorry. <laughs> I just was like so shocked that you were um, living in the Yukon. <laughs> okay. Where was I? So these, these houses that are built and you can buy them. I saw one that like 60,000 and a hundred thousand. And when I was in Yukon and when I was in Nova Scotia and, you know, I would see these developments of um, houses and I didn't even know they were trailers, right? So a trailer can be, it just means with no foundation. So it actually looks like a house. It doesn't look like a trailer, like you would see in like a trailer park camping, any of that, but they are, um, like full houses. Okay. okay? And these, even people offering these small houses for like laneways or whatever are so much cheaper. So if we had more land, like let's call it, look at the developable land on the green belt, for example, um, those types of houses to be put on these, like they're, again, I don't want to say like, oh, let's build trailer parks everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the cost to build them are so absolutely like so cheap mm. um, that, and, and they don't even look like trailers. That's the thing. Like they have a full roof, like full little deck and like, yeah. it looks like it's not like they're all like together. Um, I just think of like other solutions like that. And I'm, I'm not for trailer parks being thrown everywhere, but again, it's like these types of houses. Right. Well, you see them a lot too. You see these, these tiny homes and these, uh, they not don't that even it, have to be tiny, which is yeah, not that it fixes thing. it, like, but I didn't it's even, like a I didn't container. know they were trailers is my point. Oh, it's okay. like, that's a trailer. And yeah. then my, my idea of what a trailer was, was like an actual trailer. And I'm like, how is this a trailer? I didn't get it when I was in Yukon. I just think about the movie eight mile and Eminem being a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. There's a stigma to it, yeah. but, um, it's That's like we, we talk about, okay, all of these houses are going to be built. They're going to be 500 square foot shoe boxes in a condo and that's not livable. Well, these types of houses, they, they can be a thousand square feet. Um, and you know, you have your own little driveway and everything. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe no, it's, people, it's, not, it's not a terrible idea. Like I just wonder because the cost to build a house right now, you can buy one cheaper. So to build a house, to even buy land and build your own house, you're not going to because it's so expensive to build. So expensive to build. That's it's another so issue. So expensive to yeah. build. It's like you don't even understand it. And I was yeah. actually on Twitter. I was seeing uh, this guy. He was, I think he was a lawyer. Mm-hmm. And he was saying that a record amount of, of parents are passing down the family home to their child. So say that the house was worth 600000 they'd let the child buy it for four hundred and fifty. be like, you know, I got good 20 right. years left on this earth, maybe 30 yeah. years. That's more than enough money for me to survive. Huh. And I want you, you, I want you to get into the housing market. So I'm going to sell you the home. It's cool. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, taking a little haircut for your child, yeah. which I think a lot of parents are probably coming to the reality of like, I want grandchildren and I want them to be close to me. Yeah. And like, I've obviously benefited heavily from yeah. the run up in Canadian real estate. Some people, not everyone. Yeah. So I'm willing to, to help my child today versus when I pass away and then I give them all the money. Right. Like I want to see them enjoy the money today or help them out today. So huh. I don't have to wait until I'm gone for them to enjoy and it. Where do they go if they sell them the house? I don't know. I just, I just saw it on Twitter. This, this guy was just posting about like, um, a record amount of, um, basically parents are leaving their child, the, the family home. Hmm. So it was interesting. There was no real data upon it. I just thought it was interesting. Like, interesting. you know, a lawyer, Obviously, you're not going to hire a real estate agent to do an arm's length transaction to their child. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. anyways. Yeah, yeah. The new trust are rules. It's funny because you've always been able to self-represent yourself, but now it's like a thing that's everyone's like, oh, you don't need real estate anymore. You've always been able to put an offer through a lawyer. Always. Yeah. I actually did one last year. Yeah, I'd, I'd sold my dad's house commission free through a lawyer. Did you? I just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, just go through the lawyer. He'll yeah. close the deal for you. So I had a buyer come to my listing and he, his lawyer drafted the agreement. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
you just self-represent yourself. Like you just, you know, you get no advice. It's just for you to mm-hmm. represent yourself and Hey, there's an avenue for it. So mm-hmm. if you want to take advantage of it and you hate realtors, then there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Not all realtors are bad. We should make that sure. <laughs> but you can't be paid like a co-op commission that no. a buyer's agent would get. Yeah. yeah. No, you just do yeah, that. Just erases. Yeah. So like you can build that into your price basically. Totally. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next one. Just real quick. We'll touch on this. Ottawa approves RBC's $13.5 billion takeover of HSBC in Canada. Ottawa has given the go-ahead to Royal Bank for $13.5 billion to take over HSBC. Finance minister in front of the show, Christina Freeland not really a friend of the show, but gave the final word on the acquisition Thursday night and her stamp of approval seals the biggest domestic bank deal on record. To secure the federal government approval, RBC has agreed to a number of terms, including maintaining jobs in the short term and financing affordable housing projects. In Canada, HSBC employs about 70,000 people and provides banking services to over 780,000 clients. So HSBC was always like really competitive on their interest rates. So now RBC has kind of that stranglehold on the market as they're already the, the biggest bank in Canada. In HSBC terms of, was the only one offering 0.99% COVID time yeah. for insured mortgage. Well, they would always undercut some of the big banks just so they could get more business. And now RBC, who's already the biggest bank in terms of market cap, is uh, is taking that business over. So kind of, mm. I don't know, it's again with Canada and their competition. They just don't like it. Yeah. So it's just like, we just yeah. don't have options. Yeah. So anyways, just to touch on that real quick. Um, it doesn't have to be a huge thing. It's just, yeah, HSBC is eventually going to be RBC and, and those sweet, sweet rates yeah. are no longer there. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's Interesting. Anyways, um, here's one more, our last topic for today. Okay. Newcomers to Canada report significantly higher levels of anxiety and depression, study finds. The report includes responses of the last uh, month from more than 2,100 individuals who have been in Canada from 0 to 15 years. Analyzing the mental health status of immigrants in Canada is essential for early identification of issues, the report says, as well as connecting them with appropriate support, promotional success settlement, preventing long-term consequences, and enhancing overall public health. The report cites a lack of social support as a major factor behind newcomers. Um, economic anxiety is also cited as a major factor. For instance, more than 57% of newcomers report concerns of being able to afford food. That was the case for 31% of non newcomers. So according to Statistics Canada, immigrants are much more likely to report food insecurity, meaning they're unable to afford healthy, nutritious food because of financial constraints. So no surprise there, but yeah, I think this is always goes back to like, I remember you said this a long time ago is that you come to Canada you find out it's not all that in a bag of chips and then you call back home and you say, don't come. Mm-hmm. It's not worth it. Even the video that I made in my closet of, closet. <laughs> of the uh, international students not coming here as much. Yeah. There was a lot of comments from people like, cause we have like an Indian audience yeah. and they would be like, you saved me from coming. I won't no come way. anymore. Yeah. Like there's no chance I'm coming now. Wow. Really cool. So like that video was literally like educating That video people. got 1.2 million views and I made fun of Cortez that he does these videos in his closet because his closet has good lighting and he sent me the video and he goes 1.2 million views from my closet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how many people can say that? <laughs> oh, it's a good closet. It's a walk-in. <laughs> like you walk in and then you just take a step out of it. Like it's not much of a walk-in. <laughs> oh God, that's ridiculous. So yeah, yeah I think- Well, that's yeah, wild. It's wild. So yeah, newcomers are having economic anxiety and it's like- How do they find these people and how do they measure it? Like when they say um, mental health, okay? Is there like a test? Like how is mental health measured? And is it somebody just saying, oh yeah, I'm anxious or I'm depressed or like, because mental health, it's such a term used- I think a little bit loosely and I'm not taking away from anybody that actually shows yeah. them, like at all, at all. But um, like how many times have like people just been like, oh, the market's dead. I'm depressed. But like, are yeah. you actually in that? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wonder what the measure is for that. Yeah. I think there's, there's, I think it's, it's probably based on like, you know, why are you in, mm-hmm. you know, what's wrong with you? What do you think is wrong with you? Right. Yeah. Like a lot of people with mental health problems, like they can't really like touch upon why it's just like almost a disease in a way. Mm -hmm. But I think that if you are filling out this, this survey or whatever they did here and you're saying, I'm feeling anxious because I can't buy food. I'm feeling anxious Mm -hmm. because the economy isn't good. Then I think that that's probably the best way to measure it. I could be wrong, but I think that's kind of what I would take from the survey. And like Canadians are, 
not affording food, you know? And like, you have friends here to rely on. You have like your parents, you know, if you were really struggling, right? Like, could you not go to your parents and be like, I'm coming over for dinner. <laughs> but like, if you're an immigrant here, you're trying to make it on your own. Like yeah. you don't have that luxury. You're kind of just like, guess I'm not eating tonight. But there are Canadians that are, you know, I'm not taking away from people who, who've been here a long time and don't have that support because there probably are those people out there right now totally. that, who don't have that support and don't have the parents to help them. So 100%. I think it's just tough time. It was a tough year. Yeah. I say it how it is. It is. It's been a tough year for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think the first quarter, two quarters are going to be tough for mortgage agents and real estate agents and mm -hmm. the business in general. I think, you know, we might see a little uptick in activity, but yeah, again, I think it's just such a big reminder of like, save for a rainy day because you don't know when it's coming. Yeah, you know, it's good advice. It is good advice. <laughs> Cortez is a good saver. Yeah, it's like people are like, what budget app do you use? I'm like, I just, it's just I am good at budget. I am the budget. <laughs> you are the budget. Cortez um, saved us money somewhere and was like, yep, we, uh, for our budget for the year for our podcast, we um, are no longer spending 6000 toward this. So now we have $6,000 and I'm like, great, we can spend that somewhere else now. <laughs> what did I say? Girl math? Let's go Girl shopping. Math. Let's go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> because we're not spending six grand somewhere else, that means we have six grand. So it's free. <laughs> so it's free. <laughs> we get free clothes. <laughs> oh, I got enough clothes for Christmas. So oh God. Good enough. That's so funny. Anyways, I think that's all I had to chat about. Mm. I know Bro Brooke's heading up to her family cottage for a little New Year's. That's why my little dog is sitting with me. Oh, I'm yeah. Sure. Can the camera see the dog? We forgot about our special guest. Yeah, she's a very good girl. Yeah, this is Abigail. This is Abby. This is Abby. You say hi. Yeah, she's very nice. She's very cute. She's very sweet. She's a little long-haired wiener dog. I had to wait for her because she's blonde. And you don't see a lot of blonde, long-haired wiener dogs. So Yeah, she's, she's a special girl. girl. Yeah, the first time I met Abby... She came on my lap and just slept. <laughs> just she's like, this looks like a no, nice spot yeah. to have a nap. She's not She's not suspicious. She's very trusting. Yeah, she's, she's a good good. girl. Yeah, we love her. So she's with me because I'm going to head up north. My cottage is in Calabogie. To anybody that knows Calabogie, it's a little bit of a hike from Toronto, but that is okay. My family's already there. Had Brooke sells cottages there if anyone wants <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the ice isn't frozen though, so no really? skating on the ice. No, it's no been snow. Mild. Yeah. Well, think about it. It's been a mild winter. Like, well, we've had a ton of rain. Think about how much snow we would normally we have. Would have had. Temperature. Yeah. Would have had if the temperature was craziness. Yeah. Um, if you're yeah. from Toronto, like there hasn't been. I can't even think of a day there was actually like snow. No, like, no, it hasn't. Snowed. It hasn't snowed. No, and we're going into January. I hate it's in January. I don't hate it. Yeah. I'm not a good snow driver. Yeah, I don't have winter tires because. <laughs> It's, it snows so little yeah. that when it snows, I don't go out. Yeah. I know. <laughs> What's that saying? It's uh, snow, I no go or something. <laughs> I don't know. That's me too. That's, uh, That's so yeah, I can't show houses on those days, but any other nope. day I can show houses. Nope. I can't come, it's snowing. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, guys, that's it. Let's let Brooke get to her cottage. We appreciate all the support. We can't even believe that like we're even still doing this. Our goal was to stick to it for a year and I think it far exceeded our expectations. So it would not be possible without everyone listening thank and tuning in and liking and following and mm -hmm. sharing all of our content. We cannot thank you guys enough. So yeah, if you want to book a call with us, you can totally do that. If you don't want to book a call, keep enjoying the free content. Like we hope it helps you make better decisions for you and your family. Yeah. Have a happy new year. Yeah. Like subscribe. That's all we can really ask from you guys. <laughs> have a great new year. What 2024 brings yeah. us. We'll see you guys in 2024. We might have a special guest coming on in January. So Excellent. Our first, second, second guest. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very Return good. guest. <laughs> but people love them, so it'll be good. Awesome. All right. Thanks okay. again, guys. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you in 2024. See you. Bye. Bye.